Masechet Rava Mesi'ah Daf Lamed Dalid. The Mishnah right above said that if you have a cow owner that gives this cow to a Shomer, this is going away, can you watch this cow for me? And let's say it's a Shomer Chinam, he's doing it for free. And the cow is stolen or it gets lost. And so normally the Shomer Chinam can make a vow that he was not negligent and then he doesn't have to pay anything. But this guy says, I don't want to make a vow, I'd rather just pay. So he pays the value of the cow, a thousand dollars. And then turns out the cow is found, the thief is found, and the thief now pays double. Who gets the double? The answer is the Shomer, because we assume that the owner of the cow uh, transfers the ownership of the cow to the Shomer, right? He says, uh, oh, you gave me $1,000. You know what? I'm happy to transfer it to you. And therefore, all future benefits of the cow, even though right now the cow is gone, it's stolen, uh, but all the benefits of the cow also are transferred over, including the uh, collecting a double or even a four and five times payment if the thief slaughtered or sold it. Now we have a question. Rabbi Barchama says, what's the mechanism here? Because we have a halacha that you cannot transfer something that does not exist in the world. And right now, the double payment does not exist. The cow is stolen. It's not here. We don't know who the thief is. We don't have the thief. He hasn't paid double. And so how can the owner of the cow transfer the right to collect the double? How can you transfer a right? It's a right of a future thing that may come, maybe won't come, but does not right now. That money is not in existence. So how can you transfer it? And uh, that's according to the opinion that says that you cannot transfer something that doesn't right now exist. And even the opinion of the Meir, he says you can transfer something that has not yet come into the world. Even the Bimeir only says that you can do that for uh, dates that grow on a date palm. And so I, I, have, I own some dates. I can transfer to you the uh, crop, next year's crop. That is permitted, but that's only because it's something that you know is going to come. Every year, the dates grow, and the tree is here. You know exactly where they're going to come from. It's very predictable. And so in that case, it's really all about psychology. Um, can, uh, can a person um, have in mind, you know, uh, that I want to transfer to you something? If it's something very ephemeral, something that doesn't exist, then what, what sense is there of what, what are you thinking about when you're transferring? So if it's dates of next season which is something very concrete that I can imagine because it happens on a regular basis. And Bimir says, yes, you can buy those from now and they'll be yours. But here, it's the future payment of a thief should he be found and he doesn't admit to it but um, but pays double, right? As we say here, would say in this case, who says, first of all, it's going to be stolen? And even if it is stolen, who says you're going to find the thief? And even if you find the thief, who says he's going to pay double? Maybe he will admit to it. Maybe he'll come and say, listen, I admit, I stole it. And uh, uh, someone who admits does not pay a fine. And there won't be a double payment. So there's all, so, so many ifs. And therefore, it's hard to imagine that at the time that the owner of the cow gives the cow over to the shomer, he has in mind implicitly, listen, you know, should, I'm, I'm transferring this to you now, and should it happen that it gets stolen and you pay me instead of, of making a vow and he gets, and he's found and he pays double, then uh, that, that double will be transferred to you, right? This is uh, way too many ifs. Uh, too theoretical uh, for um, to effectuate an actual transfer. That is the challenge of Rami Bar Chama. Rava has an answer. Amar Rava. Nasa ke omer lo lich sheti ganev tirse utshalemeni hare parati kenu halacha me'achshav. Rava says it works retroactively. At the time that the owner of the cow hands it over, hands over the cow to, to the shomer, it's as if he's saying, you don't have to say this all explicitly, uh, but it's kind of implicit in the deal. Listen, should this get stolen, and should you decide to pay me, because you don't want to make a vow, and then should, because uh, 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 you don't want to make a vow, and th at that point, oh, it will be, have, it will be decided that the cow is transferred to you 
from now. So therefore, this is not the Rashi Lobalam. The cow exists in the world. It's right here, right now. So at the time that he, the owner, gives it the cow over to the Shomer, he says, listen, I'm giving to you this as just as a deposit, just to hold on to me, Shomer. But I, I retain ownership. However, I'm agreeing, to t- I'm telling you from now that I will agree that if it gets stolen and you pay me, then this transfer will retroactively be a full transfer of ownership of this cow. Therefore, um, if, therefore, if the thief is found and he pays double, it's your cow. Uh, but I'm not transferring to you the future possibility of collecting the double. That doesn't exist. I'm actually transferring you the cow from now, and it'll be yours. That's how Rava says this is the mechanism. says a problem with this. Because if it works retroactively, then the Shomer should even be able to keep the fleece and the offspring. Uh, but the Baraita says that the fleece and the offspring do not keep, are not kept by the Shomer, but rather go to the original owner. In other words, any fleece or any offspring um, that any offspring that it has in the meantime, the original owner gets. But if the transfer happened retroactively from the time that he or the owner originally gave it to the shomer, then the shomer should be able to keep the fleece and the offspring. So the retroactive answer doesn't work. Bizera says, no, it's as if one saying, again, all this is implicit in the deal, that at the time that the owner of the cow gives it over to the Shomer, he's saying, listen, if it gets stolen and you end up paying me, uh, and you decide to pay me, then this is transferred, this cow is transferred to you from now, except for its fleece and its offspring that I want to keep. That's how the Bizera will get around his own. Uh, that's how the Bizera can answer uh, that question. You have to add an exception clause. But now we ask about that. Oh, my Pascha. So Tamad de Meleta, Shabachada Tama Alma, Vabid Inish de Makne, Shabachamigufa, Labid Inish de Makne. So, how can you decide that without qualification? Mishnah didn't say that he says, I'll transfer this, but not that. Like, why would you, why would a person? Why would you assume that a person would make such a distinction that he's willing to hand over the cow from now retroactively? The cow itself, uh, that includes the right to uh, collect double, but not the offspring and the fleece. Why would you make such a, such a distinction? And the answer is yes. Typically, um, a, a person uh, will transfer, agree to transfer over profit that comes from out elsewhere. But profit that comes from the body of the animal itself, a person would not want to transfer. It just makes sense. Even if they don't say this explicitly, the owner of the cow is going to be like, listen, this is my cow. I want, want you to hold on to it. I want to keep any offspring or fleece that it produces right in the meantime till I get it back. I want to, I want to keep that no matter what. However, since it's more far-fetched, he's willing to transfer the cow should it get stolen and you pay me for the... So then, the, the other, any other ownership rights that will come from elsewhere, meaning from the thief that will pay double or four and five, that he doesn't have in mind. And so he's willing to, he doesn't have, have in mind that he needs to have it. And therefore he's willing to transfer that over. That's the difference between them. Or another version of what we just said. Lava has a different, uh, slightly different answer that it doesn't work retroactively from the time of the giving of the cow uh, from the owner to the shomer, but rather it's as if at the time that the owner gives the cow to the shomer, he says, or he implies, should it get stolen and you pay me, then it will be yours from a few minutes before it gets stolen, right? I'm giving you this thing today, and that's, and let's say it gets stolen next week on Tuesday at three o'clock. So saying, listen, should that happen, then I'm agree. I'm telling you from now that right before 10 to 3, um, it will be transferred to you. And that way, anything that happens from then on uh, will be yours, including if the thief gets is found and he pays double. Good. So this avoids the problem of, that we just said of the, what, everything that grows in the meantime. So we say, what's the difference between the first version of Rava and the second version? Two answers. Uh, one is the question of Rebizera. Rebizera's question only works, is only um, 
is only only applies to the first answer of Dava because there the transfer happens retroactively from the time that he first gave it and therefore anything that grew um, from it should should belong to the Shomer but the Braita says it doesn't and it means that I had to say oh we have, you have to assume an exception but this will not be a problem for this statement of Dava be this version of Dava, because here um, it belongs to the original owner the entire time until right before it gets stolen, and therefore the original owner will keep its offspring and the fleece. A second uh, possible uh, di difference between the two is if the animal happens to be standing in a marsh, it's out there, it, it got lost, or it's, uh, uh, it's feeding in the, in the marsh, at the time, uh, a few minutes before it gets stolen. Because of that, there's no mechanism for the Shomer to acquire it a few minutes before it got stolen. You see, if it's in the uh, in the courtyard of the Shomer and then it gets stolen, so we say a few minutes before uh, you acquire it. What's the mechanism of acquiring it? It's in his courtyard, so the Shomer could acquire it through his courtyard. However, if it's in the marsh a few minutes before, then according to the second answer of Rava, uh, the Shomer has no mechanism to acquire it as his own and therefore it won't work uh, the transfer won't work and the double the shomer will not be able to keep the double payment should the thief get get um get caught however according to the first answer of rabbi that this is yours from now that works fine because at the time of the transfer that's the original transfer that the owner says here's the cow and this will be a full if 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 you if it gets you get stolen and you pay me, this is a full transfer to entirely, entirely to you, so then it doesn't matter if it's in the marsh the entire time afterwards, that transfer will work. Oh, good. Next part of the Mishnah. Shilem velo velo dasa li shaba. Mishnah said, if the Shomer pays and says, I don't want to, I don't, I, I don't want to uh, uh, make a vow, even though really it was, uh, it was lost or stolen and they shouldn't have to pay, but then I have to make a vow to prove it, I'd rather pay. Then the Shomer collects double. Amar Rabbi Chia Bar Abba Amar Rabbi Yochanan Lo Shilem Shilem Amash Ela Kevan She Amar Hadeni Meshalem Afapi Shelo Shilem. Rabbi Yochanan says when the Mishnah says that if the Shomer pays, then he acquires the animal and acquires the right to take double. That's not literally paying, even if he didn't pay yet. But he said, I want to pay. Right? He says, I will pay you for it, even if he didn't actually pay. Just by saying that. Already he has he acquires the rights of the owner, rights of ownership and he can collect double. That's Rabbi Yochanan's chidush, and that's what we're going to uh, question in the next few uh, statements. Tenan, can we prove this from our very Mishnah? Mishnah says Shilem Shilem in Lo Shilem Lo. The Resha of our Mishnah says if the Shomer pays because he doesn't want to make a vow, so that sounds like if he pays then he acquires it. But if he didn't pay, even if he said I'm going to pay, it doesn't count. The sefa, the next case said, let's say the Shomer vows, and he doesn't want to pay. So he makes a vow that this was stolen and I was not negligent. So it sounds from here that the reason why in that case he would not get double is because he did not want to pay. But let's say he expressed his wish to pay, then it would work. If he says, I, I intend to pay, um, then he would acquire the double. So you see that the second half would prove that Rabbi Yochanan is right. The first half is against Rabbi Yochanan, but the Mishnah is self-contradictory. Basically, Mishnah just doesn't say either way. It leaves a gap in, uh, in the, for this case. Therefore, we cannot learn either way from this Mishnah. So let's try to prove from somewhere else. Tanya kevate de Biochanan, here's a braita that will support a Biochanan. Hasoher para mechaverov nigneva, Vamar hala hareni meshalem, Veni nishba, Vachar kachnim saganab, Besham tashome kefel la socher. This braita says, um, I will pay. So that's a proof for the Biochanan. Although this Mishnah, this uh, braita is in a slightly different case. We did the case of a Shomer Chinam. Here is a socher, a renter who's paying for the right to use it. So he rents a a cow and then it gets stolen and then and he says listen I uh, um, uh, I'd rather pay you and not make a vow and then it turns out that the thief is uh, found so he, uh, he the double goes to the socher you see a socher also 
can sochet is chayav in genevav aveda, but not in ones. If it was ones, like armed robbers come or something out of his control, then he is he is not liable. So he's saying, listen, really it was uh, it was ones, but I don't want to make a vow. So you know what? I'll pay you. So and same thing. Um, he 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 gets the double. And here it says. Ahmad had hala had any He only said he's going to pay. He didn't actually pay. So that's a support for it to be Ochanan. Very good. Now we have a support. Okay, a related statement. Amar of Papa. Shomer chinam kevan she Amar pashati maknele kefela di ba'e patar nafshe bigneva. Rava seems to also follow to be Ochanan. That is Shomer chinam. Once he, if if he says. I was negligent, right? And therefore, I'm going to pay. And um, so as uh, soon as he uh, says, I am negligent and I will pay, he acquires the right to collect double because he could have uh, said it was stolen and made a vow and then uh, not been and not paid anything. So therefore, the owner says, oh, well, you're paying me instead of, of, of uh, making a vow. OK, you know what? It's yours. Shomer sachar kivan she'amar nigneva makne lekefela di bai patar nafshe bishbua bishbura umeta. Same thing regarding a shomer sachar, a paid shomer, uh, who is chayav in genevav aveda. So if he says uh, it was stolen, I'm liable, I'll pay you. Uh, once he says that, then he gets the, the that shomer can collect the double because again, he, if he wanted to, he could have said it broke or it died honest and beyond my control, and he could have make made a vow and not paid anything. So he says, "I'm willing to pay double." The owner says, "Well, I'm, I'm willing to pay you for the for the price of it." So the owner says, "Oh, you're willing to pay, and you're not going to make a vow and get out of it." You know what? I accept the money, and you know what? Um, you take the double should the thief be found. That's the first two cases. La Papa continues with the third case that's different. Shoel sheomer had any meshalem lo makni lekefela b'mayhav ale miftar nafshe b'meta mechamat melacha meta mechamat melacha la shechiach. Someone who borrows without paying anything, he gets full benefits because he gets to use it and he doesn't have to pay. And let's say it gets stolen, and the shoel says, "You know what? I'll pay you for it." Um, he does not acquire the right to collect double. And the, should the thief be found, the double will go, payment will go to the original owner. Why? Because what else could the Shoel have said? What would, what would be his alibi? He only could have exempted himself if, a Shoel is only exempt if the animal dies during the course of working. While it's working, he it was using it normally and it dies. But that kind of case is not common. It's not common for an animal to die while it's working. So it's not quite a believable alibi that he could say. Therefore, basically the Shomer has to pay no matter what. So if he comes and tells the, the, and tells the original owner, you know what, I'm going to pay you for it and, uh, not, and not swear that it died uh, while it was working. You're not doing the owner a favor because that is so uncommon that we don't even think about it and you're going to have to pay no matter what and therefore by the shoel just saying i will pay that does not the owner does not yet want to transfer it after he actually pays fine then he actually paid for the item okay now he now he gained ownership for the future rights to collect double so the difference in going to the papa is in the first two cases since the Shomer can get out of paying totally by making a vow. And he says, you know what, I'm gonna, I will pay you. Just by saying that, the original owner says, wow, thanks a lot. I get my, you're going to pay, get my, give, give me my payment back, the, uh, the capital. Um, you, I transfer you to you from now the right to collect double. So once the thief is found, the Shomer keeps it. But the Shoel, he's going to have to pay anyway. So his promise to pay is uh, not going to prompt the original owner to transfer over the rights for double. That's all one version of Rav Papa. In, the, in that version, the first two cases of the two Shomrim uh, follow the Biochanan's statement that just by saying you will pay, already it's transferred, but the Biochanan does not apply to the Shoel. In this version, all three cases are the same. Uh, uh, Papa says, also a Shoel, since once he says, I, am, I plan to pay you, then the owner agrees to transfer over the right to collect double 
because if the Yisrael wanted, he could have said it died while it was working. And even if it's not common, but it could happen, and so he could have gone out the other way. So the, the original owner is happy that he's going to get paid, and so even the promise to pay is sufficient. Rav Zavid argues against Rav Papa, and he says, Abaye told, taught me that a Shoel does not get the right to collect double until he actually pays. Why? Because a Shoel gets all the benefit. He gets to use it without paying rent or anything. So therefore, just with words, just, uh, uh, just a statement that I plan to pay you, that is not sufficient to prompt the original owner to transfer over the right to pay double, right? You got all the benefits without paying anything. No, I, I'm, if, you, if, if it's found, I want to keep the double. And your statement, I plan to pay you, is not, uh, is not impressing me at all. And that, therefore, it's different. So you see that the uh, Rav Zavid's opinion is like the first version of Rav Papa. And the second version, Rav Papa says all three uh, follow Rabbi Yochanan, um, but Rav Zavid disagrees. Tanya kevated Rav Zavid. We have a Braita that supports this last statement of Rav Zavid. Hashol para mechaverov nigneba bekidem hashol v'shilem v'achar kach nimsah ganav meshalem tashome kefel la shoel. Someone borrows a, a cow from his friend, uh, 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 borrows and uses, and then it gets stolen. And then the Shoel pays, right? Kidem. He, he went and he says, no, I'm just going to pay. You don't have to bother suing me. I'm happy to pay uh, for it. And uh, I'm not going to use any other excuse. And then the thief is found. Then the double goes to the Shoel. So you see that it's only because he already paid. If he only promised to pay, then he wouldn't get it. Uh, now, according to the first version of Rapapa, this Braita would be consistent because in the first version of Rapapa, Rapapa agreed that the Shoel only collects the double when he aft actually pays. So then this would be consistent. But according to the second version, where this is a proof for Rav Zavid, this Braita would seem to go against Rav Papa. Is it? Papa says, what, is this Braita have any greater authority than the Mishnah? The Mishnah it does not. The Mishnah is greater authority. And in the Mishnah, even though it said the word Shilem, we interpreted it mean, uh, to mean he said he will um, uh, pay, and that's sufficient for that Shomer Chinam, in the case of the Mishnah, to collect double. So here also in this Braita, even though it says the word uh, I can interpret that to mean that he said he will pay, even if he didn't actually pay. So it's consistent with what I said over here in this, the second version of Rapapa. Papa. But we challenge that. So we challenge the Papa. No, but um, in this Baraita it says also the word Kidem. Uh, he um, went ahead and um, and paid. So kidem means he, he went ahead and on his own and he said, I'm going to pay. So doesn't that suggest that um, he actually paid, right? He's in, he didn't make any excuses or anything. Um, doesn't that mean that he actually paid? Um, and so the papa could answer, no. What does kidem mean? He went ahead and said, right? He volunteered to say, I will pay. But doesn't mean that he actually paid. Yeah, look at the um, the series of Baraitot, where for Shomer Sachar, it says the word Ve'amar, uh, meaning, meaning he only said. But on, for the Braita of Shoel that we just quoted, it says Kidem and Shilem. So you see that the language is different in both. Doesn't that mean that for Shochel he only promised to pay, but for Shoel, Shoel he actually paid? So it does seem like that. But we may have said, maybe we can get out of it. Midi Gabe Hadadeh Tanya, with these two Braita um, um, recited together, are they? Do they belong? For do they come from the same source back to back that we should compare the language? Maybe they are independent sources. And if independent sources, they might just have different styles, and both of them mean 
uh, that he only promised to pay didn't actually pay. So they went and checked the source. All these Baraitot were memorized. This is a good proof that they're memorized. They can't go and check a manuscript. They're not written. So they go to the source, which is from the school of the Bichia and the school of the Bioshaya. These are schools where they memorized these collections of Baraitot. And they asked them, these two that I taught, are they back to back? Are they part of one source or are they from separate sources? And they said they're taught together. And therefore, it is appropriate to compare the language of both and to infer that in a Shomer Sachar, that's where, um, or Socher, that's where um, he says he said he will pay. But for Shoel, it means he actually paid. And so, in fact, this Baraita would be a proof for the Bizera. And a, in fact, it would be a challenge to the second version of Rav Papa. Next, Pishita. Amad eni mishalem. Chazav amad had eni mishalem. Hakamad had eni mishalem. Let's say back to a regular case of a Shomer Chinam. And first he says, I'm not paying. I'll take a vow and I don't want to pay. And then he changes his mind, says, you know what? I will pay. So then we follow the second thing he said because he changed his mind and he says he's going to pay. So then if the thief gets found, um, then the double goes to the Shomer. That we know. So that's the only answer we're going to have. The rest of them now are difficulties. Ela amad hareni meshalem. Chazamad ani meshalem. Mai. What if it's the other way around? First he says, the Shomer Chinam says, I will pay. And that means he acquires the right to get double, double. And then he says, I'm not paying. How do we interpret that second statement? Did he, is he changing his mind and therefore he's saying, you know what? I don't want the double. Take it back. And therefore he would not get the double. Or is he remaining in his um, proposal and his intent to pay, but he's just buying time. Listen, I just said, I know I just said I'm going to pay, but I don't have the money right now. So he's thinking, how am I going to delay? He says, oh, listen, I'm not going to pay. But really, he doesn't mind. He's going to pay in two days when he gets the money. And so, therefore, the transfer of the double will still go to the Shomer, and the Shomer can collect the double. Uh, new case, what if uh, the, uh, the Shomer says, I will pay. Before he actually paid, he died. And then the heirs, the son said, no, we're not paying. How do we interpret that? Uh, do we understand the statement of the sons to mean that they changed their mind? And says, listen, my father agreed to pay, but we don't agree to pay. So we're not accepting the double, and therefore they would not collect the double. Or do they intend to fulfill their father's statement that they're going to pay, but they're buying time. And that's why they said we're not going to pay. But really, they intend, since they intend to, they will continue to get double. What if the sons paid? In this case, the owner of the cow gives over his cow to a shomer to watch for him, and it gets stolen. The shomer says, I intend to pay you. Right, I'm not going to argue that it was uh, um, uh, that it was lost and stolen. Um, I'll just pay. But then he dies before he gets a chance to pay. And the sons then pay the owner of the cow. So what do we do with that? Can the owner of the cow say, listen, when I transferred the rights to collect the double payment, I did it for your father because he did what was pleasing to me. I was friends with your father. He always was good to me. And so I said, you know what? Oh, you're, you're paying. You keep the double. That, I did that for your father. But for you, I didn't make that deal. I would not have uh, given it over. And so therefore, um, I no, you do not uh, take the, I, I, I didn't agree to that deal. And even though you paid, but I, I uh, intend to uh, keep the um, double payment. Or do we say there's no difference? Once the original owner um, agreed, and uh, he would agree because um, he got paid the single amount, uh, uh, the, the Shomet agreed to pay, and he says, okay, you agreed to pay? Yeah, fine, you can collect the double. Then it should continue also for his sons when, uh, um, when the sons continue what their father had promised. Shilem lebanim mai. Now, here's a case where the original owner of the cow died, um, and, and but before that, the, the cow was stolen, and the Shomer told the, the father, the original owner of the cow, that we will pay. Um, but now they died. And the Shomer now pays the single amount to the son of the original owner of the cow. What do we say in that case? Masu Amrile 
כי אקני לך אבונה כפלה דאבדת לה נייח נפשי אבל ענה נדידן לה can the sons of the original owner say that our father agreed to give you double because he liked you but we don't have that relationship with you and so we we never agreed to to transfer you to the the, the double and even though you shomer you said that you're going to pay well we that's not doesn't obligate us do we say that or do we say it doesn't make a difference since the original owner would have uh transferred the double to the shomer so the same continues with the sons and they also transfer over the transfer over the right to collect double and if you say that let's say the uh, both die you have a, a, an owner of a cow he gives a, the cow to a shomer and it dies and he says, you know what, I'm going to pay you. But then, before they, the payment goes through, both the owner of the cow dies and the shomer dies, and now the sons are, are dealing with the sons. And they pay. Do we assume that the, still the, uh, uh, the, the owner, the sons, the heirs of the uh, owner of the cow will agree to transfer the right to collect double to the sons of the, uh, of the shomer or not? And how about Shilem Mechesa Mai? Shal Shite Farot Vishilem Achat Mehen Mai. Shal Mina Shutafin Vishilem Lechad Mehen Mai. Let's say you have uh, one cow worth a thousand dollars and he transfer and he gives it to a Shomer and it gets stolen. Shomer says, um, uh, I, I pay you five, uh, Shomer pays five hundred. That's it. So what does that mean? He paid five hundred. Does he intend to pay the rest? But he didn't pay the rest. So, is that, so do we assume that he intends to pay the rest and he already gets transferred uh, the right to, to collect double, or not until he pays the entire thing? What about if he uh, said, "Can you wash these two cows?" and both cows get stolen, and now the shomer pays for the value of one of the cows? What is that? Is that a partial payment and he intends to pay the rest of it, or he's only paying for one of them? And he's not going to pay for the other one. Um, or if the Shomer borrows from two people that own a cow in partnership and he paid one of the partners but not the other. Or the other way around. Two people borrow a cow from one person. One of the borrowers paid and the other didn't. And now it gets found. Who gets the double? If someone borrowed from a wife and then and the shomer then paid the husband, well, so does that does the husband? Could we assume that the husband taking the money um, means that now the 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 husband can transfer the right to collect the double, even though uh, the animal belonged to the wife? Or let's say a woman is the one that borrows the cow and then it gets uh, stolen and the husband pays for her. Uh, does that count as payment that as if she paid and then she she gets the right to collect the double or uh, no, she's the one that borrowed and therefore the husband paying does not count. Take all, all these are questions that we leave unanswered. Amarav Huna. Mashbino to shiva shena birshuto. Maitama cheshin and shema. And Rav Natan Ba, Rav Huna says that the Shomer, in addition, let's say he wants to vow, take a vow and not pay. He not only has to make a vow, let's say Shomer Chinam, he has to vow that he was not negligent. He also has to make another vow that the item is not in his possession, that in fact was stolen. Why? Because we worry, maybe he looked at this cow, he says, oh, what a nice cow. You know what? I think I'll keep it. And then... Uh, let's just say it was lost or stolen, and, uh, and then, I, then I can keep it even without paying. Um, so he has to make a second vow that he also does not have it. He's that he didn't steal it himself. That is Rav Huna's law. Now we're going to ask a question on Rav Huna's law, but this question is only going to um, come to fruition after we quote a long Mishnah and analyze that Mishnah. So that's what we'll do now. We're actually not even going to get to the answer today. So, but well, at least we'll set up the question. This is a Mishnah in Masechet Shavuot. Someone lends someone else money with a collateral. He could take the lender, Malve takes the collateral. And now that collateral is has was lost. Now there's different claims about how much the collateral was uh was worth. Um so the Malve says, I lent you one sela, 
but the set the collateral was only worth one shekel. Shekel is worth half of a sela, and therefore, um, okay, I lost it. So that's my problem. But you still owe me another shekel. The Maves says, but the Love says, "Hala Omer, no. Um, rather, I agree with the amount of the loan. You lent me a sela." But that collateral was also worth a sela, so I owe you nothing. Uh, so here we have Amosim Achavero Alavaraya. The Mave would have to prove uh, that, in fact, the Love still owes money, and the Love therefore does not pay anything, and he doesn't have to make a vow either because he denies the entire claim. Um, this is as opposed to the next case. Sela Hilviti Chalav Shekel Hayashav Halomed Loki Ela Sela Hilvitani Alav Sheloshadi Nerim Hayashav Hayav. Uh, the beginning is the same. The Mave says, I lent you a Sela, and uh, the collateral was worth one shekel only, which is half, so you owe me another shekel. The Love says, uh, no, I, you, you lent me one Sela, but the collateral I gave you was not worth only half, it was worth three quarters of the amount. So I don't owe you one shekel, but only one dinar, only a quarter of a sela. So this is mode bemiksat, and that's the law. Mode bemiksat has to make a vow. He doesn't have to pay anything, but he has to make a vow that he doesn't, that only he only owes a quarter and not the half that is being claimed. Okay, that's all. That's case number one and two. Cases three and four. Flip it around. Here the love says, the borrower says, you lent me a sela, and the collateral I gave you was worth two sela. I gave you a collateral that was worth double the original loan, and therefore the love says, you owe me one sela. But the malve says, I lent you a sela, and the collateral is only worth a sela. And therefore, we're even... Um, uh, so, in that case, the Malve does not have to pay anything. Let the Love prove that the uh, collateral was worth two Sela. Last case, The Love says the same thing. You lent me a Sela, I gave you collateral worth double, so you owe me one Sela. And the Lo Malve says, no, I lent you a Sela, and the collateral is only worth one and a quarter. Um, uh, um, uh, five dinarim. Four dinarim is one Sela. So therefore, I only owe you one dinar. Um, so then in that case, the Malve has to make a vow, because he's Modeb Mixat. The claim is a whole Sela. He agrees that he owes that he owes a quarter of a Sela. So he has to make a vow that he owes only a quarter of a sela. Now, the Mishnah concludes, Mi nishba, who should make the vow? Mi sha pikadon eslo. Shema yishaba zev yosi hala et pikadon. The, it always should be whoever has the collateral, meaning the malve. He always has the collateral. He's the one that should make the, take, uh, he should make the vow. Because if the love would make the vow, then we worry that the love is going to make a vow about how much it was. Then the malve will produce the collateral and he'll say, oh, I found it or I had it the whole time. And he may prove the love wrong. We don't want to set up a situation where the love will make a vow and it'll end up being proven wrong because the malve will, in the end, say, realize that he has the collateral all along. And therefore, better to make the malve take this vow of Modebe Mixat. So that before he makes the vow, he'll be like, "Listen, before I make the vow that I, this you know was worth this much, I better really check to make sure that the collateral is totally gone because I wouldn't want myself to be contradicted." So therefore, the malveh should take the, should take the vow. Now that's the end of the Mishnah. The Gemara is going to say, "Ahaya, this last clause of the Mishnah, which clause of the four previous four cases is it modifying?" It can only be the modifying either cases two or four, because in two or four there's a modem mixat there and there is a vow. In one and three there's no vow because there there's a denial of the entire amount. So which one is it? Is it two or four? Let's see. Let's try number four. Ilema asefa, the very last case. If it's talking about the last case where. 
the um, uh, the borrower says, um, you owe, you, I gave you a collateral worth two, and you owe me. And he says, no, I only owe you a quarter of it. And now the chidush is that, what? That the malveh has to make a vow? Well, obviously, the malveh is the one that is modeh b'miksat. All right, so we could figure this out on our own from the basic Torah law. Uh, this is modeh b'miksat. So it can't be that, it says, who would make a vow? The malveh, the, because of, he has the pikadon. That, that's who we would expect to take the vow anyway. Rather, it must be that this uh, the last clause is modifying the resha, meaning the second case, asefa de resha, right? The second clause of the first half. Sela helviticha alav, shekel hayashave, hala meloki ela, sela helvitani alav, shelosha dinarim, hayashave, hayav, teshwa gabe lovehu, vamura banan, vishtaba malve, shema yishaba zev, yosi hala etapikadon. And so we remind you of the case is where the Malve said, I lent you one Selah and, uh, the, uh, and uh, with the collateral, but the collateral is only worth one Shekel, which is half, and therefore you owe me the other half, one Shekel, whereas the Love makes a counterclaim. No, not true. It's true. I lent, I borrowed a Selah from you, um, but the, the collateral is worth three quarters of a Selah. I only owe you a quarter. And so who would make the vow? Well, normally the love is the mode bimiksat. So it would make sense that in the Torah law, the love would make the vow. And now the rabbi, the rabbis at the end of the Mishnah says, yeah, but in this case, we're not going to say so. Let the malve uh, may, may be the one to make the vow that the, that about how much the collateral is worth. Because if the love makes a vow and then the malve produces the, the actual deposit, then he'll be found to be a liar, and we don't want to set, set up such a, such a situation. Okay, that is the analysis of the Mishnah. And now here is where why it's relevant to Ravuna. Ve'im ita l'dravuna, kevan de mishteva malve she'na birshuto hechi ma pik la. According to Ravuna, he says that whoever has the collateral, Whoever has an item should vow that he doesn't have it in his possession. So here, since the Malve is going to make a vow and needs to make a vow that it's not in his possession, how could he possibly then produce it? Why are the rabbis worried that, oh, the Malve might make a, might produce it? Don't have to worry about that. The Malve is going to make a vow that I don't have it because we don't, we worry. Otherwise he might have, have decide to have pocketed it. Since we don't have to worry about that, about that. So the Malve could make the normal modeh uh, b'miksat vow. And so you see this Mishnah and the analysis after the analysis of the Mishnah does not make sense according to Rav Huna. Amar Ravash, yesh edim she nisrefa. Rav is going to answer that. We're talking about a case where witnesses say the collateral was burnt and that's why the Malveh does not need to make a vow. We're going to follow up on this uh, answer and challenge it and then uh, offer some other answers as well on the next stuff. Baruch Adonai Amen v'Amen.